Tig, just like MIG, you have your rules, recommendations, and personal preference. Let's talk about the rules. Now, the rules are always going to be in reference to your cup or your nozzle. Now, if you have any line of weld, what you want to do is you want to start with your work angle. Your work angle is going to be that line, if it had a plane coming up straight through, you want that nozzle splitting that plane 50-50. You want the arc to heat up both uh, pieces of material evenly, liquefying both pieces of material evenly, and concentrating your shielding gas on that puddle, hitting it evenly. Next thing, your push angle. In TIG welding, it's primarily push. You're very rarely going to be in a situation where you can pull. So we want to drop into a push angle. If you are a right-handed person, you're going to want to push left. If you're a left-handed, you want to push right. So what we want to do when we start is we are going to drop to a right-handed roughly about 70 degree push angle. So those are your rules for your nozzle. Make sure that 70 degrees for your push angle stays true and also your nozzle is splitting perfectly perpendicular as you move through the weld. Now the next thing for your rules, your filler metal. When your filler metal pushes into your puddle, you want your filler metal and your tungsten to meet at about a 90 degree angle. So if my torch angle, my push angle is at 70 degrees, this has to be 20 degrees up to make that 90 degree angle happen. So those are your rules. Now, recommendations. Recommendation is always comfort. You always want to be comfortable when you are welding. So if you're sitting at a table, which you normally will be doing when you're doing TIG, you want to have a comfortable chair. Your position of your chair, the height of the chair has to meet your leg length or your comfort zone to reach your pedal so you can depress the pedal and stay comfortable while you are welding. Now, let's talk about personal preference. Personal preference for this is normally in consideration to being comfortable. So if you have your torch, some people get used to having the hose pulling on their hand like so, and I don't typically do that. What I like to do, my personal preference, is I like to boa the hose around my back and it takes the weight of the hose off my hand. That way I can move through, I'm still comfortable, but my shoulder is taking most of the weight of the hose. So now I'm not fighting the hose weight as I move through my weld. It helps me out a lot. So it also depends on your angle of weld. Anytime you're seated and you're at a table where you can manipulate your piece, put it in the position that's most comfortable for you to complete the weld that you're trying to do. If you position your material so that the line of your weld moves across your body straight, you'll notice that my wrist starts to torque. That can get uncomfortable. So what you may want to do is position the material at an angle, maybe 20, maybe 30, 40 degrees, to move with the natural movement of your body. It's going to make it more comfortable all the way through. You're going to be able to be more steady and more supportive and have a more even travel speed. Now, I'm gonna give you a couple of tips on this. Think of it this way. There's a plane on the side of your shoulder and there's a plane three quarters of the way through your chest. That right there from the, sho from the shoulder three quarters of the way through your chest, that's the area you want to weld in. That's where you wanna position the material. If I go too far over, you can see that I'm leaning over and then I get out of position as I move through. Same thing with three quarters of the way through. If I go too far past a certain point, I have to lean into the weld, which might compromise my rules a little bit. So you just wanna make sure that the material is set up mostly for comfort so you can move all the way through the weld comfortably. So those are the rules, recommendations, and personal preferences.